Hi everyone, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be talking about using Playmaker with VRTK, using the Playmaker VRTK actions. Now, some of you may be already doing this, and some of you may not be, but I'm just going to go over a little review about how to set this up to help people out. And a few things have changed since VRTK uh, 3.3.30 3 alpha. So let's have a look. The first thing you need to do, of course, is have Playmaker installed into your Unity. And I'm not going to show you how to do that, so, you know, just go ahead and install that. Next is make sure that you have the newest version of the Steam VR plugin. And, you know, try and have these uh, installed first before you add anything else to your project, just in case. The version we're using here is 1.2.3, which came out January 10th, 2018. Next thing you're going to want after that is the uh, this project from GitHub from the Stone Fox, which is VRTK. And you're just going to go over here to the branch and make sure that you're not on the master, but you're on the release, uh, which now is 3.30 alpha. But by the time you get to this, it may potentially be the final release. Then you're going to go ahead and just download this. And once you have it on your hard drive, you're going to unzip it, and you just need from here the in the assets folder, you just need this VRTK part. Okay, so you can't download the project from here. You need to download it right from the root. So just download the whole thing and then grab out the assets part. The last thing you're going to need here is from my own GitHub which is uh, Dumb Game Dev, then you're going to look for VRTK Playmaker 3X. And again, you can just download here, download the whole zip, unpack it, and put this folder into your Unity Assets folder. So once you're done, it should look something like this. You should have Playmaker in here. I've got a couple of custom actions. We're going to have your Steam VR in your project, you're going to have VRTK, and then I've got my VRTK Playmaker actions. Okay, it doesn't matter which folders these go in, but you just want to make sure they go into a folder so that they're nice and organized. Um, you know, and you don't want them all over your assets folder here. Other than that, it should be okay. You might get a couple of these warnings here about things being uh, depreciated. It's no problem. It's not going to stop anything from working. This just means it supports an earlier version of VRTK as well, although I strongly recommend you use 3.30. So when this is all done, you should be able to check your actions list for Playmaker and find that it has the VRTK actions here, such as VRTK, helper, interactions, locomotions, etc. Now I'm going to show you how to get started with a uh, scene, how to get your rig going and stuff, because it's going to be a little bit confusing for some people, especially since there's been a couple of changes. Let's just go over to VRTK and open up one of the example scenes. And we're not going to use the legacy example files, we're going to use the new example files. And I'm just going to choose uh, the teleporting one. Now if we look at this in the... I'm a little bit changed up here, let me just open up this hierarchy here. And the inspector here. We want a couple of things out of this just to help us uh, speed things along and we want specifically the uh, camera rig spawn point because this is what we're going to use to spawn our camera rig and you can see it here it's just these um, you know blue shapes in the scene that uh, I'll turn on and off so you can see that we'll set up our spawn point. So you go ahead and make a new folder in your assets. I'm just going to call mine prefabs and grab this camera rig spawn point and just throw it into your prefabs folder. The next thing you're going to want is this VRTK scripts and you can just grab this entire thing and throw it in there as well. So this is all that we need from here. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we go back over to VRTK, open up the examples, and open this VRTK SD Constructor Manager. And so this is a really important point not to miss. We're going to open this up. I don't want to save that. And what this does is actually contains a lot of the rig scripting. So you can adjust things here. But what we want to do is go File, and choose Build Settings. And make sure that we have this added to the build settings. I see mine is accidentally added twice. I can remove this. For some reason, I'm getting both. Okay. So make sure that you have at least one of these in your build scene settings. Otherwise, you may not be able to build properly. 
and it may not uh, play properly. So this is new to VRTK uh, 3.30. Previous to this, you would have had this in each scene. Now we have it in its own uh, separate additive loading scene. We'll go ahead and make a new scene for ourselves. And we won't save anything here. We'll just do something quick and dirty here by putting down a... Um, I like to use cubes, so let's just say 20 by uh, 0.1 by uh, 20. So we have a nice uh, floor to stand on at the position 0 by 0 by 0. I actually think I have some uh, materials already in here. Let's grab a solid color and put it down. So go ahead and make some materials or something if you want. I just uh, eyeballs. So we'll set this to four. Okay. So then going back to our prefabs, we can go ahead and grab. I'm going to throw the spawn point in here, and this is where our rig will spawn, hopefully. Pretty good. And then we're going to put the VRTK scripts, and I'm just going to zero those out again. You don't have to do this, it just helps keep everything uh, in order. Now, opening up this VRTK scripts, I'm going to look for the additive scene loader. So we need to set our spawn point here in this additive scene loader, so we just can grab this entire camera rig spawn point, drop it in there, and then that's it. Everything else is already set up here. The scene constructor, which we added to our build settings. If we don't have this, we're going to have a problem. There's a scene switcher here. I don't need that, so I'm just going to delete it. And we have the right and left controller aliases already set up. And as we can see, they just basically have some uh, pointers on them. So that's it for now. So why don't we give that a try first and just make sure it works. So let's save your scene before you do anything. And we'll call this a VRTK test um, scene. And I'm going to hit play. And sometimes it can take Steam VR a few seconds to load up. And that's okay. Um, if it doesn't load up, stop your scene and then try one more time before you get too worried about things here. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. You might need to move your game into a separate window here, just if you want to see an uh, update on what's happening in the scene. Otherwise, sometimes it does not update properly. Okay, so I've just picked up my uh, headset here. I can get this going. And I'll turn on my controller. And. Yep, there we go. So as you can see, I'm not moving anywhere yet, though. Um, so we'll have to set that up. So why don't we turn this back off? Okay, so in order to get us moving somewhere, we already have the Bezier, Bezier, Bezier pointer going. And it says enable teleport, but we need the teleport script. So just under my VR and TK scripts here, I'm going to create another empty and we can call this whatever we want. I'm just going to call mine um, rig scripts. And on here, we're going to need to add a VRTK teleport script. So just choose add component. Uh, I'm going to type teleport and see what my options are here. I like this dash teleport. So you can go ahead and check the VRTK documentations or the VRTK videos about it, this different types of teleports. Let's try again. So there we go, we're teleporting around, and it's already working. Okay, you may need to add uh, a couple more scripts that are commonly used here just to round things out. So we typically use the VRTK grab. Uh, so we have VRTK interactive grab, VRTK interactive uh, touch. Uh, one more. Can't well, grab, touch, use maybe. RTK use. Interactive use. Okay, so you probably want these on all of your controllers if you want to touch, grab, and use things. 
though. I'm not going to go over again the whole setup of these things. You can find this on the VRTK channel. It's just sort of a reminder that you want these things. So again, go back to your scripts. Then I'm just going to click, click, click apply to update my prefab. So now I can just drag and drop that prefab into any scene I want. Okay, now to get to the Playmaker parts, so I'm going to add a new empty game object. And you know, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine Playmaker for now. And I'm going to add an FSM to this. So I'm going to go to the Playmaker window, right click to add FSM, and now we have a new FSM over here on the game object. And why don't we try one of the controllers here? Let's see what events we have. So we'll go down to. Oh, I can't even remember. Let's try VRT controller. That is. And why don't we choose a um, trigger, maybe? So we'll choose the uh, trigger is pressed. We'll add it onto this uh, first state. Let's call this wait for trigger. You can call this whatever you want, it doesn't matter, it's just there to help you uh, remember. So now right now it says, Game Object requires a VRTK, VRT Controller Advanced Component. Click here to add required components. So you may be tempted to just click here, and then it's going to add a component to this uh, game object, but this is not going to help you. Okay. I'm going to remove that, it's going to give us the error message again, so we need to give it a game object. What's the game object? We need to give it the right or left controller that has this component, this VRTK controller event script. So we'll go back to Playmaker, we're going to grab the right controller alias script and drop it in here, and lo and behold, no warning message because this is it. Now we want to see if the trigger is being pressed, so let's add this um, rule for this called trigger down. So it's currently false. We're going to hit every frame, save, and then play. And let's give our trigger a little squeeze here just to see. And as you can see, I'm maybe you can see a tiny bit here in the game screen. I'm squeezing down the trigger and it changes from true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. So we could use this along with a bool check just to see if the trigger is down. So this is how you get started using VRTK along with the Playmaker and the VRTK actions. Uh, I've got a couple more videos here on my channel on how to use them. Some of them are a little bit outdated, but the general concepts remain the same, like 99% of the actions are the same. Really what's changed here is VRTK has changed a little bit itself, but again the general concepts are the same, so go ahead and check out those videos to get some more ideas.